Hey, how's it going YouTube? This is your boy Chosen and welcome back to another discussion video. And before we start, guys, we are two freaking days away from chapter 54. I said this before, but I do believe after this arc wraps up, everything about Boruto's story is going to change and we are finally going to enter the dark stage that Kodashi mentioned about before. I just wanted to give my piece on that because I'm very excited for the future and can't wait to cover more interesting topics. All right, so for today's video, I wanted to explore the particular character of Kashin Koji or Jiraiya, whatever you want me to call him. I shouldn't have to mention spoilers at this point because I mean he was barely shown in the anime and based off of the one panel I put in my thumbnail it's pretty obvious I'm going to be going all out in this so yeah let's get started. Kashin Koji first made his appearance in Boruto chapter 15. At that point Kashin Koji instantly became one of the most intriguing card members mostly due to the fact that he was the only card member who wore a mask. Oh and yeah he kind of looks like Jiraiya. This Jiraiya accusation was also backed up by a singular panel and that's Koji implying that he seems to be linked to Konoha by fate. At that point it was pretty obvious who this man was. The the biggest question asked about this claim was why and how he is back and even received some slander when it was actually revealed who he was as fans of the Naruto series thought this ruined Jiraiya's character. And my only response to that is that this is not actually Jiraiya, Jiraiya himself is dead. His personality is dead. This is a clone of Jiraiya, not the actual character. So if Naruto and Jiraiya meet up, you know, I know some people are expecting a sweet touching reunion, but to be honest, we're not going to get anything like that. It's going to be like that one scene from Avengers Endgame to where Star-Lord meets up with Gamora again, except that's the one from the past and she's confused as hell because this version of her doesn't know him. That's how it's going to go. But from Naruto's perspective, I can definitely see some emotional scenes coming out of him, knowing how much he loved Jiraiya and saw him as a father. But I mean, it's all hypothetical. We gotta see what happens this chapter because for all we know Naruto may die and we don't ever get that Kashin Koji and Naruto meet up. It's all up to Kishimoto. Anyways back on track. So yes Kashin Koji who's a member of Kara works under a man named Jigen who promised each member that once their overall goal is complete he would grant them all any wish they please. A task bestowed on Koji was to retrieve the vessel which in this case is Kawaki after the airship he was being extracted in was taken down by a mysterious character. Once at the crash site Boruto for the first time gets introduced to this character and we see him completely crush Al's body with a toad. Again, by just even reading this chapter, you can tell Kashin Koji and Dry are just two different people. Dry isn't known to be an aggressive killer, but Koji doesn't hesitate. You can kind of look at him like an assassin, just doing what he's got to do no matter who's in his way. And to back this up, as soon as Koji lit up Trashamaru, had it not been for Boruto's karma seal revealing itself to Koji, the man would have literally slaughtered every single person there. We skip a long list of chapters ahead up until the first interaction between Naruto and Delta. And it's here that we first learn about Koji's ability to enter Konoha and avoid the sensory barrier. Well, this isn't so much an ability, but it's something that only Koji out of all the card members can do. And again, that's because he possesses Jiraiya's DNA. He's a Jiraiya clone, so entering Konoha isn't a problem to him. Now, literally at this point, if you've been reading the manga since then, there's no way you didn't come to terms with this being Jiraiya. It was completely obvious who this man was. Actually, coming back to the Koji versus Team 7 battle, he also literally performed a Rasengan. There were no other hints needed. This man was clearly related somehow to Jiraiya. Kudachi definitely wanted to emphasize this and make it clear, which I think he did a pretty good job of, seeing how it kept people interested in his character, even after the actual reveal, which I'm about to get into. Probably the best moment of Kashi and Koji in general is the whole interaction between him and Jigen and the reveal of Ishiki. After the Naruto and Sasuke versus Jigen battle, which is going to be legendary when animated, Jigen's body was starting to wear out and he needed to head back home to, I guess charge up. I believe those paw looking things heal any person that sits in them. So I'm just going to assume that's what he was doing. Healing. Jigen stated that he was at 10% of power, meaning he was more vulnerable at this stage. At that point, even super strong shinobi who didn't possess six path chakra or abilities could probably have a chance at taking him down. And that ladies and gentlemen was the calling for Kashin Koji, who reveals to us that with Jigen weakened, his and Amato's plan would now go into full effect and Kashin Koji would go for the kill. Revealing to us that Amato and Koji were never on Jigen's side from the beginning, tying in everything now since the beginning. We can come to the conclusion that with all these conveniences like the airship being taken down by a mysterious character, coordinates to the ten tails just being left around for Konoha to see, all these things that didn't make sense before now do. It was Kashin Koji the whole time working under Jigen but only for the sake of saving the world, which we know gets revealed later on down the line. Kashin Koji is a complete clone of Jiraiya with a few twists. That was created by Amato in order to help him stop and defeat Ishiki once and for all. That was his one and only purpose. So back to the Jigen versus Koji battle. Battle, it starts off by Kashin threatening Jigen, telling him that he's going to kill him. Jigen laughs this off as even at 10%, he thinks Kashin still can't hold him, which is later proved to be wrong. As they are fighting right before the reveal, we see Koji perform a bunch of moves that are literally what Jiraiya used back in his days. One of the only moves we see that stands out is a fire technique that Koji summons from faraway flaming mountains that is so hot 
even someone with her generative abilities cannot survive this attack head on. And we see that with Jigen because this attack literally kills him. Well, had he been at 100%, probably not. Since the Karma Seal couldn't absorb it, Jigen instead tried to shrink it with one of his abilities and it was working, but because he was so drained out from his battle with Naruto and Sasuke, I, I assume he ran out of chakra or something and the flames just incinerated him. Now I know with these flames, some like to compare it to a Matarasu, but I thought it's as powerful as a Matarasu was stated to be able to burn anything it touches and never run out. Koji's flames are insanely hot, yes, but there's more likely a limit to how much it can burn or how much it takes to take out these flames. A Matarasu can never be taken out unless they are absorbed or pushed away with Almighty Push, which are both Rinnegan abilities, so... Yeah. Then after Jigen is defeated, Ishiki finally comes out and reveals to us that Kashin Koji is officially a clone of Jiraiya and Koji isn't playing around anymore, as we see him immediately summon Sage Mode, which is very interesting, because remember, this isn't Jiraiya's body, it's a clone. So how was Omaru able to create a clone that was able to perform this kind of Sage Mode without having to go through the training at Mount Miyoboku? Which hopefully gets explained, if not in the manga, but the anime. In this mode, we see him use other Jiraiya-like techniques, but ultimately in the end, of course, Koji loses. As if someone like Naruto and Sasuke couldn't handle Jigen together, there is no way in hell Koji against Ishiki, who's way stronger, is gonna be able to even make a dent. Before these two go at it 100% though, Ishiki comments on how Amado planned this whole thing well and how Koji doesn't even know that he's being used by Amado, the same way how Jigen was being used by him. Koji is confused of course and he generally thinks that he was going to be the one to defeat Ishiki as that was his purpose in life. But Ishiki taunts him and tells him that he's crazy to think that he's gonna be the one to defeat him as the only ones who possibly even stand a chance is Naruto and Sasuke. He goes on to tell Koji that he's nothing more than a shinobi tool used by Amado and doesn't even realize it. After Koji was defeated, Ishiki mocks him some more and says that it's possible that Koji just didn't want to admit he was being used and that he was actually going to do something heroic. But thankfully, Koji was able to escape through a summoning and that's all we see of him up until now. So yeah, Koji's character is actually pretty interesting after you look at him, but there are still some information missing about Koji that again, will hopefully be tied in later on. The biggest question I have have with not exactly Kashin Koji but Jiraiya is what is the connection between him and Amado as we know nothing nor have any hints of Amado's character in Naruto or Shippuden. Like Ishiki says, Amado wanted to cling to it, to that man's mighty fate, to the minuscule possibility of change. I mean, out of all the shinobi Amado could have tried to recreate, in terms of power, there's definitely better options. So it clearly wasn't about that. Like Ishiki said, it was about changing his unfortunate fate. Why was Amado so tied into Jiraiya? Well obviously I don't have the answer to something like this, we have literally no hints at all. But 100% for sure, Amado and Jiraiya have some kind of positive relationship. Whether they were best friends, brothers, I, I don't know, something. In the future, this definitely has to get touched on as something like this cannot be half-assed. As we're talking about Jiraiya the Great here. In conclusion, it seems that Jiraiya is finally again playing a role to the plot and making a somewhat return to the series. But that's going to do for today's video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you like Kashin Koji's character? Do you like the fact that Jiraiya in a way was brought back? Thank you guys for watching all the way until the end. And I'll catch you on the next one.